It's Flemmy here! Well, haven't we had such an amazing adventure so far? We followed the professor to the jungle where we found that God is bigger than anything that we could ever imagine. And then yesterday, and we're still here, we went to the sheep field and we learned that God is stronger than we could ever imagine. It's been so amazing. I just can't wait to find out where we're going to go today. But do you know what? I've got an invention for you. I'm really good at inventions, aren't I? What did you say? No! Well, this one is going to blow your socks off. Poof! Okay, here we go. So, look at it. Just imagine. You know I found it really hard with the air balloon to try and get it up, up, up and away. And it needed to be stronger, it needs to be bigger and all of those things. Well, I've had a brilliant idea. I've got lots of little tiny hummingbirds that go... Can you do that for me? Very good. A little bit higher. Really well done. I've got loads of them, and they're going to make so much air that it's going to lift the air balloon up. Look at all of them that I've got here in my fantastic cage. Where have they all gone? Oh, I remember. You see the globe from the first day. I put it in there to try and make more room because I'm running out of space. I must have let the hummingbirds go. Goodbye, my friends, goodbye! <laughs> oh well, it's going to be okay. We're going to have a great day today. But I can't wait to find out where we're going to go. I've got with me the guidebook that's telling me where we need to go. But can you remember who we're waiting for? That's right. We're waiting for a pigeon to come. I wonder which pigeon it'll be today. Hang on a minute, can you hear the noise? Oh, there he is. Oh, no, hang on, it's not Gary this time. Come here, come here, come back here, come here. Oh, oh, it was Carrie the pigeon. Say bye-bye, Carrie. Bye, Carrie. Oh, and there's a clue. Oh, this is it. Please help me out. You know I'm not very good with these. Sandcastles, spades and seaweed are here. Come to the blank where the next story appears. Sandcastles, spades and seaweed are here. Where do we find all of those? Where? What did you say? Hills? No! We're in the hills already! We're not going there again! Where? Peach! Tasty peach! We're not going to go and eat a peach! Don't be silly! Hang! What? Say it louder! I still can't hear you! You're right! Beach! Let's try that in here and see. Sandcastles, spades and seaweed are here. Come to the beach where the next story appears. Oh, I'm so excited about going to the beach. I've got loads of other inventions in here that are going to help me when we go there. Oh, this is going to be amazing. I can't wait. But I need your help. Can you remember how we can get it up into the air? Can you remember? My hummingbirds aren't going to help me, but you can help me to get the air balloon up. Can you remember what we have to say? You can? Right, here we go then. Okay, I'm going to take my hat off for this one. Right. Look up! Look down! Look left! Look right! With God on our side, we can take flight! <gasps> Oh, it's ready. We need to get back in. But don't forget, we're now going to sing. Here comes the theme song. Get yourselves ready. Stand up. Do a little jiggle. Here it comes. I'll see you when we get to the place of the beach. Right, everyone, on your feet now, because this is our theme song, Bigger Than Big. We want everybody dancing around and joining in with the actions.
because I want to try out one of my new inventions. It's called Flemmy's Floating Submarine. I've got all kinds of things here. I've got a board here that I'm going to use. So come on, everyone. Let's keep going and come and see what it's like on the sea. I really do love my new invention. Oh, it's amazing. Flemmy's Floating submarine really does what it says. It floats. It doesn't go underwater. I'm just bobbing around here and I really want to go and see the fish. But don't worry, I'll try and get back to the balloon. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, I'm back where I started. I'm no good at this. Oh. What did Mama once say to me? Sing a song, Flemmy, and everything will go okay. Hmm, what was her song for me? Hmm, oh, my mum said to me, if you ever go to sea, you must be wary of the seagulls. They squawk and screech all day. And they always get in your way. Oh, you must be wary of the seagulls. Oh, it's not really working. I'll try one more verse. Okay, here we go. They steal all your food. And on my head they put... Poor starboard! Oh, it looks like someone's lost at sea. Oh, and listen to that screaming. Oh, they must be in real trouble. Oh, I've got some rope. Don't worry, I'm throwing you a rope. Just get ready to catch. Oh, Penny, it is just so unbelievably amazing to see you. Thank you so much for saving me. I've been on an amazing adventure where I've been learning all about the professor, and he said to come to the beach. And I landed over there in the water, and I made a really great invention that didn't really work. Um, but how come you're here? Oh, well, lovely to see you, Flemmy. I can't believe that you've landed on this beach. Oh. Well, as you know, I love to go down to the beach every day, do my exercise, go swimming and do all those fun things. And ever since then, I've been given the job of being a lifeguard. Oh. So my job is to look through my binoculars and to see and make sure everyone's safe. And it's wow. a good job too, because I saw you floating about there and I managed to rescue you. Thank you so much. It was amazing. Oh, well, I'm so glad to do it. In fact, I love spending time just checking and... Oh, oh, wait, Flemmy, I, I think there's a killer whale out there and... Oh, it looks like it's in pain or something. It's fins all floppy oh, and no. weird. I think oh, we need to rescue it somehow. I know. How about you use your amazing Flemmy's floating submarine and you can go out to the killer whale and I can direct you from here with my binoculars. And, oh, wait a minute, I'll give you this paddle and then you'll be able to get to it and then we'll be able to save it. Killer whale? Killer whale, that's right. <laughs> that way? That way, that's it. If you jump in. J jump in? Yes. Me? Uh, uh, okay, uh, I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> Killer whale? Why couldn't it be a, a, like a friendly goldfish or something like that? Ooh, I'm so scared! Flemmy, Flemmy, you're the 
other way! Behind you! The other way! Oh, ow! Oh, my poor, oh, my little toe's got a cramp! I, I can't turn around! I'm so sorry! Oh, quick, quick! It's the poor killer whale! Oh, yes! Oh, oh! Oh, no, I've got water in my eyes. Oh, I can't see where I'm going. Oh, oh sorry. But wait, turn around, Flemmy. I, I will turn around. Ah, seagulls! Ah! Oh, killer whales, killer whales, killer whales. Other direction. Okay, I'm turning around. I don't like killer whales at all. What is Penny thinking? <sighs> Whale Bob. Oh, it, it smells. Oh, it smells so vile. I think I'm. Oh, it was disgusting. But at least I suppose the whale looks okay. Oh, oh no. There's loads of things bobbing around. Oh my goodness, they must have come out of the whale when he went Bop. Let me try and find them as we go. Oh. Oh. Penny, I've got a sign for you. It says, wrong way. I'm going to throw it your way. Okay, I'll come and get another one. Oh my goodness, this is heavy. Oh. Penny! I don't know. I'm going to bob this one along to you as best we possibly can. It's a suitcase. Oh. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there was more. Oh, this stinks. I can't believe she made me come and do this with the killer whale. Oh, I'm so angry. Oh. Hello. What's your name? A worm? It's all slimy and horrible. Oh, this is a horrible job. Oh, I bet Penny should have come and done this. Why am I doing it? I'm not a lifeguard. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh there's a fish. Hello, look. Oh, whoa. no fish. Oh, he's swimming towards you. Oh, my goodness. Hang on, there's one more to get. I, oh, it's like the other stories that we've had. Oh, we've got a clue. It says, Jonah... One to four, Jonah! One to four, Penny! If that means any sense to you, he knows! Oh, I haven't got any other clothes to change into. I am going to stink! Oh, that killer whale. Oh, Penny, Ooh, I'm so upset. I'm going back to shore. I'm really sorry, Flemmy. I didn't mean to send you out there to get covered in whale burp. I knew that that killer whale wasn't looking happy, but I didn't expect you to be smelling quite that badly. Oh, but at least whilst you were out there and when that whale burped over you, you managed to find the most amazing things. A suitcase, a worm and a fish. <laughs> That's incredible, because I think I know that this is a story from the Bible, from the guidebook, from the professor. And I would love to tell you the story if I can, Flemmy. OK, I think that might cheer me up. I mean, I stink, but I think that will cheer me up. Can you tell me it now? I would love to. So listen up for all these things that we find out in Jonah chapters 1 to 4. Now Jonah was a man who loved God. He believed in God Almighty and told the people all about him. And God had a big plan for Jonah. As Jonah sat beneath a tree, God spoke to him. Jonah, I want you to go to the city of Nineveh and I want you to give them my message. But Jonah was afraid. He knew the city of Nineveh. He knew that the Ninevites there were terrible people. They would fight and argue and were so cruel and evil that Jonah did not want God's message to go there. And so Jonah 
got himself up from the tree and travelled down to the harbour, to the port at Joppa, and he paid the man there in order to board his boat. But instead of getting a boat that went to Nineveh, he boarded the boat going to Tarshish, the opposite direction. And as the boat left, the waters began to change, the wind began to blow and the rains came down hard. Lightning flashed across the sky and the sound of thunder rumbled across the land. And all those aboard the ship were terrified. They tried to cling on and hold on tight to the boat. They threw cargo overboard in order to make it safe, but nothing they did would help. And Jonah instead of praying to God, was fast asleep in the middle of the boat. When the captain saw him, he told him to get up. Quick, rise, pray to your God, pray that he may save us all. And when Jonah went on top of deck and saw the storm around, the people turned to him. Who are you? What are you doing here? Where are you from? I, I'm Jonah, he said. I'm a Hebrew, and I believe and trust in the God Almighty, the God who made the seas and the land. They decided to cast lots to see who was to blame for the storm that was coming. And when Jonah took one of the straws, his was the shortest of all, meaning he was to blame. What are you doing here? they said. I am running away from the Lord, Jonah replied. You're to blame! And with that, the sailors tried to find a way to save each and every one of them, but nothing they did would help. They tried rowing aboard ship, but it wouldn't work at all. And so they turned to Jonah. What must we do to be saved? You must throw me overboard, said Jonah, and then God will save you. Oh Lord, don't blame us for what's going to happen to him, they said. And with that, they threw Jonah over the side of the boat. And as Jonah entered into the water, he sunk deeper and deeper into the blue darkness and the seaweed began to cover his face. Oh Lord, help, prayed Jonah. And with that, God sent an enormous fish to come along and swallow him up. And in one big gulp, Jonah was inside the belly of the fish. For three days, he was inside the beast. And inside there, Jonah came to his senses. He realised that even though he tried to run away from God, God was always with him and had saved him by sending the fish. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you that you're kind and gracious and that you saved me. I will do all I can to follow you. And after Jonah had prayed, God told the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach. And with a great big thud, Jonah landed on the sand. And God spoke to him again. Jonah, I wish for you to go to the city of Nineveh. Give them my message that they have 40 days until punishment comes. And so Jonah went into the city. Three days he travelled from place to place and house to house and street to street, proclaiming that God had told that 40 days from now, great punishment was coming. And Jonah found himself in the throne room of the king and he told the king what God had said. And the king's heart changed. The king made an order that everyone in the land should wear sackcloth and ashes to fast and pray, for surely if they prayed, maybe God would change his thoughts. And so they prayed, and so they changed, and rather than being evil and cruel, they tried to be good and kind. And God saw their change of heart, and indeed said that he would not punish the people. But Jonah was angry, so angry he wished he were dead. Didn't I know this all along? Didn't I know, Lord, that you were gracious and kind and that you had compassion? That's why I tried to run away from you. 
and now you've gone and saved the people. I wish I were dead. God spoke to Jonah. Jonah, what right have you to be angry? I am angry, said Jonah, and I'm going to sit here and wish I were dead. And as he sat on the hill, he built a shelter to keep him out of the sun. And God made a vine grow up, a beautiful plant that gave him great shade. And Jonah loved the vine. But overnight, God sent a worm to come and nibble away at the plant. So in the morning when Jonah awoke, there was no vine left, just some leaves on the ground. Why did that happen? Oh, I'm so angry, Jonah said. What right have you to be angry, said God to Jonah. You didn't plant the bush, nor did you cause it to grow. But yet you're sad and upset when it's destroyed. Don't I also have the same thoughts and the same heart for all the people of Nineveh? They do not know their left hand from their right, and I do not wish to destroy them. For there are 120,000 people there that I have rescued. Well, isn't that the most incredible story? The story of Jonah and a whale and a worm. Did you know there was a worm in that story? Well, today we're going to be thinking a little bit more about the incredible greatness of God. Now, before we start, I've got a quick question for you. And that is, have you ever deliberately not listened to someone? Like when your mum tells you it's dinner time and you pretend you haven't heard it. Or maybe when you're told to tidy up your room or it's time to go to bed and we pretend that we didn't quite hear what was going on. Well, that's the story of Jonah. You see, Jonah loved God and he knew God really well. But when God asked him to go and help the people of Nineveh, he kind of put his fingers in his ears and he decided not to listen. He didn't even answer God. He just packed his suitcase and went off in the other direction. What a strange thing to do. Why was it that Jonah decided to go the other way? Well, it's all because of what God asked of him. Now, instead of Jonah turning around and saying to God, oh, that's a really hard thing you're asking me to do there. Please come with me. Or even saying, Lord, I don't think I can. He just put his fingers in his ears and went the wrong way. But the people that he was going to go and save, the people of Nineveh that God wanted Jonah to help, well, they were really, really bad people, which is why he packed his trunk, which is why he went the wrong way, and which is why he ended up on a boat. Now, at first, they were just floating around, going like you or I would, floating a little bit like Flemmy was. But when the storm came and the waves got bigger and bigger, that was when the people on board knew something was wrong. And that was when Jonah admitted to what he was doing. He admitted that he'd packed his bags and gone the wrong way and was running away from God. And so he ended up overboard and out at sea. But God didn't leave him there. God sent an enormous fish to go and save him. Now you might know the story of how the fish swallowed up Jonah. And Jonah was inside the belly for three days. And it was there when Jonah's heart began to change. You see, God didn't just leave Jonah when he ran away and went in the wrong direction. He didn't do things to make Jonah turn around and come running back to him. God rescued him. God saved him when he was in amongst the water and put him inside the belly of the fish. See, God loves to save. And that was the whole reason why God has sent Jonah to the Ninevites in the first place. Now, I want you to think of the worst person ever the biggest bully that you've ever met. Can you think of them right now? Can you picture them in your mind? 
Well, now I want you to times that by 100. Times it by 1,000. Because that's what the Ninevites were like. A whole city full of bullies. A whole city full of people doing the wrong thing. And God wanted to save them. God wanted their hearts to change and for them to turn back to him. (laughs) But Jonah, he didn't want it to happen. You see, Jonah wanted them to get into trouble. He wanted them to be told off for all the bad things they had done. And he didn't want to come in with a message that God had given him, the message that they could all turn back to him, which is why he went the wrong way. And you see, the heart of Jonah was not the heart of God's. The heart of Jonah had actually decided that he wanted bad things to happen to those people. But God wasn't going to give up on Jonah and he wasn't going to give up on all those bullies in the city of Nineveh. And so we have this rather strange part of the story where there's a worm. So Jonah is out there. He's gone to the city of Nineveh because he's heard God and he prayed to God inside the whale. And when he went through the city, he told them all that God had seen what they'd done. That God had decided that he would save them if they turned their hearts back to him. But Jonah's heart wasn't turned back to them either. So he sat on a hill really grumpy. And that was when the worm comes into our story. He sat there all grumpy and moaning, waiting for the city to be destroyed. And he wanted God to do something about it. And if God wasn't going to destroy the city, well, you may as well destroy me, he thought. And so God grew a beautiful plant, a vine that came over the head of Jonah. And when the sun was hot and beaming down, it was a nice, cool shade. And Jonah loved it. And as he slept, God sent a little worm to come along and nibble at all of the roots of the vine and nibble at the stem and nibble at the leaves until the vine was no more. So when Jonah woke up the next morning, instead of the beautiful vine to give him shade, he saw that the worm had nibbled away at it and that there was nothing left to protect him. And boy, was he cross then, even more cross than he'd ever been. God, what have you done to that vine? It was a lovely vine and gave me nice, cool shade. Yet you sent a worm to destroy it. Oh, I wish I were not here, he complained. And it was then that God spoke to Jonah, spoke to him again. And as he spoke, Jonah's heart changed. Jonah, did you grow that vine? No, thought Jonah. Jonah, did you cause it to grow and give you shade? No, said Jonah, but yet you still love it. And yet you're cross when it's destroyed and gone. But look at the city. Look at all those people in there. 120,000 people and animals too. Do you want them destroyed also? And it was then that Jonah's heart fell for God, fell for all the people, and his heart grew to love them. He realised that he could fall in love with a vine and love its shade and want to keep it safe and was sad when it was destroyed. How much more was the love of God for all the people in the city? And that love was what was shining out through God's word in order to save everyone. And so Jonah knew that his heart had changed also. You see, the thing with Jonah is his heart needed to be changed. He had wanted those bullies to get their just desserts. He wanted them to get the punishment that they did deserve. But God is so much greater than that. God's love is for everyone. And he wants to forgive everyone too. He wants our hearts to be turned round and turned back to him. Which is why he sent Jonah in to go and rescue them. To send like a rope to gather them in and bring them back to God. 
And when we don't want other people to be forgiven, when we want them to get what they deserve, well, that turns our hearts. And it doesn't just turn our hearts against the people who've done wrong to us. It also turns our heart away from God. And God wants us to come back to him. His love is greater. And so he wants us to say sorry and forgive what other people have done, even if they have done wrong to us, even if they have hurt us. God wants us to forgive others. Because I've got something to tell you, leaning close. The problem when we don't forgive others is that it's our heart that turns bad, not theirs. And it's our heart that turns away from God. And so God's love, which is greater than everything, wants our hearts to turn back to him. And it's a really, really hard thing to forgive others. It's not saying that what they did was right. It's not saying that they were okay to be bullies and okay to do the wrong thing. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is saying, I know you were wrong. I know that you hurt me. I know that you hurt others, but I'm going to forgive you so that my heart can be right with God. And that's what forgiveness is about. So we're going to pray now. We're going to think about people that we find it really hard to love, really hard to forgive. And we're going to use my wiggly worm to help us. So I want you to get your fingers out like a wiggly worm as we're praying now. Lord God, we thank you that you love us so much. But we're sorry when we find other people hard to love. And we're sorry when our hearts have turned like Jonah's and we've turned away from loving you and loving others. Help us to forgive other people because we know that you've forgiven us. Amen. And you can give your little worms a little wiggle now. And so God loves it when we turn our hearts back to him. And if you found that prayer a bit too hard to pray today, well, you can still ask God to help you to turn your heart round, to help you to see the good in others and to love other people just as much as God loves us and he loves them. Today's memory verse comes from 1 John. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 This song reminds me that even in the darkness I don't need to be afraid because God is my lighthouse. In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you Question. 
Hello everyone and welcome to Flemmy's Adventures Prayer Activity for Wednesday. Now today you've been looking at Jonah and Jonah's a story all about water and a whale who swallows Jonah. Now you've also been looking at how God is greater. He is greater than that problem he is greater than the sea he is greater and better than all those things now in front of me i have a little pot of water and i thought about actually how in the sea you drop a pebble in the sea and you get ripples which spread and spread and spread and get bigger and bigger. Now, in your house, you might have a bigger bowl than I do, and you might be able to drop a pebble in your water, and it might you might see those ripples moving out further and further out. And I'm hoping you can see my ripples as I fiddle with the water, moving out and out and out. Now God is greater than those things. He's greater than the deepest ocean on earth. And you know what's so great about God? Is that he wants to talk to us. And Jonah spent time talking to God. And we can spend time talking to God too. So for our prayer today, I thought I'd play you some water music and you can either play with the water whilst you're talking to God, feel it cold over your hands and dripping off as you take your hands out, or swirl the water around and see what patterns you can find. But actually while you're doing that, talk to God. I will lead you through that so you'll know what to talk to him about. But actually, if we listen really carefully, we can hear God too. And we might hear God in, in lots of different ways. We might hear him through our heads. He might speak to us in our heads. He might speak to us by making us feel a certain way, making our fingers tingle, making us feel a little bit hot. Or he may give us a picture. Now, if you imagine your bedroom at home, now you might be in your bedroom or it might just be along the corridor or up the stairs. If you imagine your bedroom in your head, you can picture where everything is. Now, God speaks to us and gives us pictures in that place, in that place where you picture your bedroom. And if you tell me what your name is by saying it in your head, because I won't be able to hear you if you shout it. Maybe I'll hear some of your names. And if you say it in your head, the place where you say it, that's where God speaks to us too. So I'm going to play some music. And whilst I'm playing some music, I want you to really talk to God and think about, see if he's talking to you back. And as I said, to remind us of our story and how Jonah spoke to God, we can use the water to help us remember. So in your head... I want you to tell God about your day. I want you to say to God, actually, God, I had a good day yesterday, or I'm having a great day today, or yesterday I watched Holiday Club and I learned that you are great. Tell him about what you ate for dinner. Tell him about what you had for breakfast or lunch. Tell him about your favourite food. Why do you love that food so much? Tell him 
about your favorite color? Tell him what you're scared of, what makes you worried or sad. Tell him how much you love him. Ask God his favourite thing about you. And ask God to talk to you. What messages do you have for me, God? What do you want to say to me? Dear God, I thank you that you are so great. I thank you that you want to talk to us. I thank you that you love us. I pray that as we go through the week, go into school, go into work or nursery, that we remember talk to you and you speak to us. I pray that we remember how great you are. You're greater than any situation we are in and we can talk to you about it. Amen. That was really great praying, everybody. Well done.
wow, what another fantastic day. I can't believe that I found out that God is so much greater. He even forgave Jonah when he tried to go away. Do you know what? I think I probably need to forgive Penny as well because she was only really trying to help. I'm sorry that I blamed you, but that book really did smell. Is that okay? Oh, thank you. Of course it's okay, Fleming. And thank you for saying sorry. That's, oh, I'm, I'm sorry too. But you know what? I've learned that God is bigger, God is stronger, and God is greater than anything that we can imagine. I cannot wait for where we're going to go tomorrow. It's really exciting. I feel like I've forgotten something before we go off on our next adventure. Fleming's Family Challenge. Today is a really fun one. We've been down to the beach and we're going to play Flapper Fish. You're going to cut out a little bit of a fish from a newspaper, put it down, and then you're going to use the rest of the newspaper to flap the fish and race all of your family and see who can win. Sounds fun, but we'd love to see some of your pictures, so please put them on the website. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I wonder what's going to happen. Now, we have heard from the professor a lot, but could we maybe talk to the professor now? I think that's a great oh, idea, Flemmy. It'd be Penny. lovely to chat to the professor. And we can all do that by putting our hands out as though we're receiving a gift. Let's do that. Okay. So, Heavenly Lord, thank you that you are greater than any other person. And you are greater than all of our thoughts and our worries and even when we get grumpy with others. Help us to forgive others and to follow you. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, now there's just one other problem that we've got. I've still got my air balloon. It's still in the water. Can you think of any way that we could get it out? I've tried to push it. I've tried to use my kind of submarine. It hasn't worked. Is there anything else? Well, funnily enough, I was having a little think about this, Femi, oh. and I think you need something greater than what you've got right oh. now. So we have got a propeller for oh. you that you can use on your hot air balloon. Thank to you get so you much. I'll put there. that down there now. Right. Everyone help us out. We're going to count. I'm going to put it in, and hopefully it's going to push it out of the water. Okay. Count with me. I'm going to put it in. Three, two, one. Oh. Send your photos of craft and family challenges or anything else you want from Holiday Club to ChristchurchPearlyOnline at gmail.com or click the Send Photos button at the bottom of the website. Don't forget to check out the website for more puzzles, games and activities. If you're a grown-up and you want to know more about today's Bible story, then visit the Going Deeper tab on the website.